The Senate author of the fireworks bill joins me now to talk about his piece of legislation and the fact that he is stepping away from the Senate. Senator Michael Youngbauer, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. It might not be the most significant piece of legislation this session, but it does impact just about everybody. So you carried the Senate bill, you moved it forward, you stated you wanted this piece of legislation to be your last. Why? Well, so I could go out with a bang. Um, you know, as you said, it does affect everybody, and it's almost a, a prohibition. You know, we're, we're back to the prohibition times where so many people in Minnesota actually go across our borders, buy fireworks, bring them back into Minnesota, set them off. There's no, because it's, in general, it's, it's illegal, there's not a lot of controls, and people look the other way on a lot of things. Um, so it actually solves a number of things. It makes people law-abiding citizens, but because you would put it into law, assuming we can convince Governor Dayton to sign it. Um, once it's illegal, there's a myriad of controls you can put in, and actually you have a lot more uh, control over the issue. Um, for example, you can uh, set hours that you can put them off. You could set times where the fire marshals can say, okay, it's a high fire period, you can't set off fireworks. But when something's illegal, you can't tell somebody not to do what's already illegal. So, so what do you think Minnesotans need to know about this new fireworks legislation? Um, the key is we have some of the, the lesser fireworks, um, the non-aerial fireworks, meaning uh, now we would be allowing bottle rockets and things to actually go up into the air. Uh, we call them aerial and audible devices, so they make a big boom up in the air. Um, but I think people need to know you need to be a little safer, although ostensibly we've been firing them off to begin with. Uh, but it allows those to be legal that during a five-week period of time you can buy them, you can possess them, you can put them off in this time period. Um, but because we're opening the doors and we're limiting it to that five week period of time, I want Minnesotans to know we need to show the governor uh, that we are responsible and that anything that happens with fireworks once they're legal, that the injuries and the fires would actually go down. Let's see that downward trend, let's see responsible use, um, and let's show people that you've given us the opportunity to not have to go to Wisconsin and South Dakota and other places to buy them. Let's make it a better way to use them in Minnesota. The debate on the House floor, the, the subject came up that Minnesota has become a no fun state. Would you agree with that? I, do you think this makes it a bit more fun? I think it, it's in some cases a no fun state and, and I think people love to celebrate their freedom the 4th of July. We should encourage that. Now a lot of other cultures actually use fireworks other times of the year and this wouldn't include those kind of things. So by using them responsibly, we can open up the doors for other cultures to celebrate their New Year's and other things. Well, even us, we like to celebrate our New Year's with that. But other cultures love to use fireworks as an expression of a celebration of big events in history. You would need to try to convince the governor. And as of right now, as of this taping, you haven't spoken with him yet, but you said you do plan to meet him. What do you think the chances are of getting this signed? Well, I wouldn't say I haven't spoken with him. I've been in contact with him and his staff through the whole process, and we've sat down with everyone. I mean, we've sat down with the cities, the fire marshals. We've tried to get people to move forward. We've compromised along the way. We've put more language in the bill. Um, but in point of fact, if people just plain don't like it, and it is a, a uh, League of Minnesota City's position to not have fireworks in Minnesota. It's a fire marshal's position to not have fireworks. You can't convince them no matter what you do. So we have worked very diligently to try to, to uh, squelch some of the fears and bring it as close to a neutral position as possible, but we, we can't um, do that. So we're really hoping that the governor looks at it. Um, some outside um, analysis now have said, just by having this five work week period of sales, that's $6 million in the Minnesota state tax coffers. So that's significant as well. Not the reason to do the bill per se, but why give it to Wisconsin? Why give it to South Dakota? Okay, Senator, let's talk a little bit about your career in the Minnesota Senate. Ten years, what, you know, you've been a very strong proponent of lifting the moratorium on new nuclear facilities and expan expansion of nuclear. Also have issues surrounding the environment and climate change. So in your opinion, has, been, has much been done on the state level to address these issues? Um, in 10 years, it seems like, well, first off, the 10 years went fast. It's not like you plan on being here for 10 years. It just happens. Um, I don't know that we've moved closer, but certainly we've gotten the issue out there on nuclear and climate change and other things, that there is both sides. And you know, it's always been my position to move everything towards a healthy discussion, to let citizens know that there's two sides to every story and both sides ought to be allowed a full vetting before we make decisions. I've always uh, worked on that. I, I believe that is my legacy here to bring those kind of things forward. So what are you proud of so far? Um, 
Well, I've tried to be a different kind of politician, and I hate when people call me a politician. Um, so it's not about legislation that I've worked on that's passed, and I, I do hate people that say, I passed this or I passed that. It takes a lot of people. It takes good researchers. It takes reaching across the aisle on most things you do uh, and, and to get a good consensus on how to move something forward. So it's not anything you can ever do by yourself. So I'm very proud that I have never claimed I did something by myself. Um, and in campaigning, I have never gone negative, and, and no matter how much I get attacked, I never go out and say, so-and-so does this or so-and-so does that. I've always said, when I go door-to-door, -door, even if somebody says, well, what, what about your opponent? They said this about you, and I say, well, you know, they're a good businessman or woman, or here's where I think they're good. Anything beyond that, I don't know anything about them. So I, I've really stuck to my guns on those sorts of things. Um, I've always been adamant about trying to have the right amount of time with my family, which they'd argue probably never quite gets there. But um, And as well, I will never work, um, especially on campaigning and things on a Sunday. I mean, I do my things around the house, but it's not for me to work on Sundays. Senator, the majority of your time in office was spent in the minority. You've recently been in the majority. What would you, con how was that transition for you? Um, you know, it's an interesting dynamic. The best thing, of course, is we get great real estate. I have one of the best views from the capital of uh, anyone over the South Lawn. Um, the transition is, is rather difficult, really. It's, it's really easier to make friends out of the minority, I think, when you're in the majority, there's already this push that, oh, you're just trying to use your heavy-handedness on us now that you have that position. So, and it's a little safer in the minority. You can say things and do things and not have to worry about so many repercussions. So I think when you're in the majority, you really have to focus on leadership. You have to focus on moving ahead and bringing people with you um, in a way that you don't get a chance to do in the minority. Senator, I'd like to give you a chance to say something to your constituents as you leave office. Here's that opportunity. Um, I'd like to say thank you. It has been such a blessing, and um, I'm kind of an emotional guy. I mean, really, um, it, it has been a blessing. I feel blessed to be here that people trusted me, and I truly believe I've uh, fulfilled that trust. I don't vote for things because it's my deal, because it's a... Um, you know, some other group has, has had that as their issue. I sit down and I go back to my BPOUs. I, I sit in people's garages and have coffee or a Coke with them. We sit and we talk about the issues and I vote for them. I have this moral and ethical line. I've always said, I won't cross that. But beyond that, I am your representative. I'm here to vote for what you want. And I thank them for the trust they put in me. And I don't think I've ever betrayed their trust. Senator Michael Youngbauer, thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much.